bottom? I'm on. I'm on the bottom. <laughs> Rip it. <laughs> Look at I'm that fish. It. There's so many of them down there. Oof. Oh. They're down there. The big group going. of them. Not a very big one, but a nice one. Another little one, yeah. Jeez. Colors they are just so, so good. Just even the small water. ones are healthy. The future 10 pounder right there. Yeah. yeah really. <laughs> we got Get some. Down. I got one. Got them. Fish on, fish on. I was going to say. Finally. Take your Damn time. Things. That might oh, be yeah. one of them. You got He's your. He's fighting. <laughs> uh oh. He's fighting. We're going to have a double hook up here getting in a second. Up, get down there. He's... If you need me to switch places with you, let no. me know, but I'm getting down there. Whoa. This one's a little Go bigger. Go ahead and take. <laughs> oh, look at the graph. Where am I at? I'm trying to get out of your way. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll just stay back here. <laughs> I know. I want to. We're going to get a double hook up. This That's going to be a big one right there, this buddy. A lot bigger. That's going to be a big one. These fish are turned on right now. I don't know if I'm over your line. I'm over your line, aren't I? Are you? I don't know where you're at. Sorry. It's all right. This one's pulling. Just... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the line, I was like, oh, no. Wouldn't that be in the shits if it just <laughs> with the hook cut it? Ooh, oh, look at that one. That's a lot bigger. Nice. Nice fish. Come here, little guy. Barely hooked. Yeah, he's just... Oh God, look at that, he just barely hooked. They're still down there. Oh man. That's that's where that light rod. Oh look at it, got him on the end. Oh good. Look at that. All right. <laughs> that's a nice one. That's more like it, huh? Look at that, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Look that? at the graph. Yeah, the graph is still going. Oh, good. Adam, oh, shoot. look at this. <laughs> we better get back down there. <laughs> look at the graph right here. Look at the school of fish, I just had one. Oh my God! See that We're in them now. big school of fish right there. Look at it! Yeah, look at the big school of fish. Oh I just my. got bit again. This is what we've been waiting for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is what we. Oh, that was a good. What three and a half, four? Yeah, that was. He was heavy. They're fat. They're oh, broad on man. their shoulders and fat. Look at that. Oh my good God! Good group of fish. Again. Oh, got him. Get him. Uh oh. Oh, it came off. Oh no! Oh, he came back. And get it. I thought he, I had slack in it for a second. Oh, that felt like a good one too. Oh, that felt like a really good one. Boy, they're here, aren't they? Where are we at on this top mountain? Oh, there we are, right straight from that suburb uh, rock. Oh my God. <laughs> I had him. I couldn't budge that one. That one felt that like a real good one. Still was on. Oh my God. I can put them oh, on. Oh, the graph was just lit up, wasn't it? Oh my gosh. Still down there. Yeah, they're still. <sighs> right on the bottom. We can get another right one. We can get them going, you know. I had them on. Come on, baby. Add them on. They're in the area. That was a nice one. Yeah, I catch the. Catch the tiny one, you catch the big one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something, you know, sometimes they all school, you think they school the same size? Well, there's a good example, huh? Yeah, I guess that's... The little ones swimming with the big ones. Mm-hmm, exactly. Oh, man. Ugh. Yeah, I got You have to just kind of circle around, Matt. Just I, I, think you're, I think you're right. I think... Uh... Just stay in the area and circle around just slowly or let the wind drop it, drift us. I think what you were saying, though, with, with what we were doing is pretty effective, just cruising along with the toy motor till you see a fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, just hunting them down. We're just, just like you're looking for deer, you know? Yeah. We're just I... cruising around, and when we see some, hey, slam on the brakes, man. We're going we're yeah. to catch these. <laughs> Gary kind of smacked me. <laughs> yeah. I hit him, I hit him I on the back like, stop, you know, we're going full blast, you know. <laughs> stop a minute. Put the brakes on. He did, I tell you, he put them on and boy, that was a, that graph was the best one we had. Oh it? man, and they're they're active Just, too, that's what's cool, is yeah, they're, those they're were. good fish. Some good quality fish. Oh. That's, let's catch some more. Yeah. I'd like to catch some more. I know. They're, they're still swimming down there, that's the good part. All right, well we're sitting, sitting in about 44 foot of water, 45, anywhere from 45 to 50. Seems like where we're, we're finding the majority of these, you know, schools of fish. And basically what I like to do is I'm just dropping my spoon down and I'm trying to get my spoon in front of them. So 
Um, if I'm seeing fish on the graph suspended, I'll reel my spoon up to them and I'll see if I can get that fish to react on it. So I'll reel it up to them, hop it around them a little bit, I'll lift it up, see if the fish will follow it up. And if I can get that fish to react on it, more often than not, you can catch them. Um, so basically, just <laughs> if I don't see fish on the graph, I'm, I, I let it fall all the, way to, all the way down to the bottom. And the way I like to, uh, you know, fish these spoons, and it's just like if you think about a jerk bait, when you're, when you're ripping a jerk bait, you want to have that snap and have slack line after, after that snap. Same thing with a spoon. I'm going to give it a, give it a hop and then slack line as it falls. And when the fish are real active, you'll see that line, you'll see that line on the, on the, on the fall. The, you know, the line will jump and that's when you get the bite is when they hit it on the fall. So basically right now, so we're on Canyon, uh, 45 to 55, even as deep as 60, 65 foot, we're catching some of these fish. And, uh, you know, they're out here deep, just, just chasing shad. And I think as it gets colder, it's just going to get better, you yeah. know? So, these fish are living deep, for sure. Yeah. The, bait, the bait's not that deep either, you know? The bait's That's like, true. like 10, 15 feet, but the fish are down deep. Yeah. You know? and, and you can see that they're suspended down there too, you know? Right. In uh, 30, 35 feet, those are all fish right there. Yep. But, you know, when we find the bait, it'll all be right on the very, very top. Yeah, the bait seemed to be anywhere from that 15 to, to 25 foot where the shad seemed to be schooled up. And it seems, seems like once the, once the fish start chasing the shad around and get the shad spread out, man, it's just like a dinner bell. The fish just go oh, nuts. We it's all fun. just crisscrossing. <laughs> oh, I hope you got a picture of the graph on that. Oh, that was incredible. And oh, look yeah, at them here. Them here. Starting yeah, again starting now. to get go. active. Okay, down and that's why I say... All right. And basically that's what we're looking at is these fish, these fish around here are starting to swim around. Instead of that fish is just sitting there, we're getting some fish, you know, along with our spoons that, that start to get a little active. And that's, that's what you kind of want to look for is those streaks. Those streaks, you know, are fish that are active and chasing and moving. And that's, that's, a, that's one thing when you know you're going to get a bite when they start doing that. Or at right, least gonna, you know you should get a bite, one of the two. <laughs> I'm going to reel up and, and uh, we were using white. But now we switched over to this color right here. So it's got a black, a black top with a silver, silver bottom. And the last one I hooked was hooked right on the very, very front hook. That front one. And mm -hmm. you hooked one, your nice one too. Yeah, on same on the front for hook. For some reason. You yeah. Know? But uh, that looks kind of like a minnow, you know, black, black top, silver sides, got the fin on the back. So when you pull it, the thing is going. Oh Double my hook God. up time. Look Double hook that. up. Come on. Double come hook on. up. Come on, oh my God. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, geez. Golly, they're pulling. Look at them digging. Oh. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Make sure you're on the bottom. Make sure you're on, the, on bottom. the bottom. You're going to catch that. They're streaking down. If you don't catch one, Gary, I'm oh telling you. Oh my God. <laughs> Come on. We got, <laughs> we got a on. bunch of fish on the graph there. Oh, geez. That's a nice one. You got a good one? Yeah, pretty good. Oh, another big one? Another nice, Three, healthy four. one? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Got them oh, on the treble hook. Well. Yeah. Don't forget. Wait, they're just healthy. No, it's not as big as it. Look bigger underwater. <laughs> well, that's a good one. Three. Three. <sighs> They'll surprise you on how much they weigh. But again, just beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. God, that's nice. We'll let him go. He's... We can do better. Okay. They're starting to bite. Look Get it back that. down. I Look know. Get it. <laughs> All right. I when I see streaks, I'm ripping. Ripping. That is. I don't know. <laughs> those are those are stacked down there. Just stacked. I can stop. Oh, I can't stop it. I switched it. Oh, I got it. See those streaks? Those fish were diving down. Diving down, there's my spoon coming down, but these fish were active. And that's what you want to see is those fish streaking and moving like that. I can, yeah. You can see we had some shad up, up higher earlier, but they're still down there. Man, that's, the a, that's, a, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing is we're just, uh, Gary showed me something here. Is we're just getting on the trolling motor till we, till we see a few fish and put the brakes on, slow down, and start fishing for them. It's it's paying off. Yeah, it is. It's uh, hunting them down, you know. 
Now, like I said, a lot of times you, oh, look at those fish. A lot of times you get areas where they're, you know, they're key areas. Look at those fish going. Here we come. oh. We're coming into them. See, that was this my. This is what it looks like coming into them right now. Look at this. That was my spoon going above them, and now I'm dropping down through them. And oh, because I've always talked about using the spinning reels. Yeah. And you know, with the, with these spoons, the way the way they fall, they just fall kind of like a rock. You know, they just fall right. straight down. Whereas the, the hammered spoons and the strata spoons, they flutter down. And that's why I like to have that spool open on the spinning reel so that it flutters on the way down. Right. This one just falls just straight. The action is actually so on the lift. The bait caster, yeah, so I, I have it on a, yeah, I have it on a bait caster. But, you know, the, the hammered spoons or the strata spoons, um, if, you, if you put it on a bait caster, it just falls straight and it doesn't give it that natural action that I really like. You know, as it falls down, because you get a lot of bites on the fall. You okay, know, here we go. Oh, something followed go. it down. Yeah, look at now. I see his Ooh, line going down. Yeah. Now there's the line going down. His spoon, and look, there's a fish there. Fish that followed it down right there. It came out of nowhere. See, and the, and these fish will in this you know clear water. They'll they'll swim you know 20, 30 feet away to to, to eat a you know eat eat shad. And that's they're keying down, in yeah. on the shad. Obviously, we've caught them and they're spitting up shad and right. you know. They're uh, <laughs> they're keying in on that shad, so we should be able to get a couple more out of this. Area right here in this little bowl, like we're in. Yeah. So. God, we need to get a double of five pounders. That's what we need. I'm telling you. That'd I've be done awesome. it. I've done it. <laughs> yeah, that would be totally awesome. Let me go to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I drop it to the bottom, get slack line, and then I'm lifting it up. Just, it's a really easy process of doing, you know. Matt's got a little bit more uh, defined that he sees them up halfway up on the screen and he'll he'll reel up like this and he'll get right where they are and he watches them on the graph and then he jigs that spoon. Then he watches the fish come up to his spoon. He goes, oh, 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 he's coming there. <laughs> eat it, eat it, eat it. <laughs> so, and then if he don't and he sees one on the bottom, he just opens it up and lets it go back down. Yeah, it's, a, so. it's like a cat, cat and mouse game, yeah. you know, I mean, oh, you're, yeah. you're, uh, and that's the importance of having, you know, good electronics this time of year. I mean, you know, this fall, you know, you can catch them in five foot of water and 65 foot of water. Right. But, uh, you know, in the wintertime, that's, that's one thing that I, that really helps me is just uh, really believing what you see on your graph, learning how to read your graph and believing what you see. Right. And that's why I say when you can see your line. Like we're watching both our lines, you know, down there. And when you can see your line, you know, you know, other lines are going to be fish. And that's, that's one thing I was going to tell you. A lot of people ask me, it's like, I'm just not seeing arches. I'm not seeing the, the arches, like the, the box has the picture of, you know, on the graph and, oh, there's some fish down there, there too. <laughs> but, uh, when you're, when you're at idle speed or you're moving, you're going to see arches because of the way the transducer and the cone comes down, you're actually going to see arches. But if you're in stopped in one place and that fish is underneath you, you know, if the boat's, boat's here and the fish is underneath here, that transducer is just sending a signal down and basically it's just bouncing off that fish's head. So all you're going to see is a line. So that's what I look for is those lines and I look for those lines to move up and down or be active and that's when I drop my bait down, your drop shot or your spoon right. or whatever vertically fishing. And that's, that's one of the biggest, biggest tips is, you know, then you're not always, you're not going to see arches if you're not moving. You're just going to see lines. And that's what I look for is those lines to react on the baits you're right. throwing. So. That's a that's that's one tip that's I think a lot of people, you know, have trouble with is, is they're looking for those arches and like I said, it's, right. you're not going to see them. Now, now I can tell you the difference between Matt's rod and mine. Matt's got his rods custom made. This is a medium, a medium with that, a fast tip, and he and, and you really need a, a medium heavy. No, I actually, yours, yours is medium light. Mine's medium. Oh. Okay. Yeah, mine's medium power, fast okay. action. I so think yours medium is medium light. light it should say. I got on there. a real soft, soft tip. Yeah. And you know what? Medium it's, light. Yeah. And it's it's good once you catch a fish because it all that bend and those treble hooks and these small hooks we're using. Right. That's good for that because it keeps them keeps them hooked. If you use too heavy of a rod, it's gonna you know have a tendency to pull those hooks hooks out, especially okay. when you have them skin hooked. Okay. Yeah. So that's what's good about it. But yeah, I think with a a medium action rod, you can still get plenty of snap to the spoon, you know, uh, you know, to give it the good action. Um, I don't feel bad because I missed two or three or four of them, but you have two. Yeah, no, I have two. So, I, have I mean, it, you know. They're just not, they just didn't just, seem to be eating it really, really good. not biting real good. They're just, they're the typical Florida 
and I don't know if we talked about this on film, but the Florida bass that are in this chain of Salt River Lakes, mm -hmm. when you have a front come through or something, boy, they get picky on eating things. They just don't want to bite good. It's, they're not like our northern bass that are, that are in all the lakes, you know, most of the lakes, but these Saguaro, Canyon, Apache. And now, yeah, Roosevelt too. 450,000 Floridas in there, and they're like 13, 14 inches long, so they're going to be the same way. Yeah, they I get big fast. Boy, if those Florida strains take oh. off in Roosevelt, that's going to oh, be awesome. Oh, with that shad? Oh, it's going to oh, be awesome. Oh, those gizzard shad? Oh. Hopefully they gobble them all up. Oh, we'll boy. We'll get huge. Oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> it takes so. about, what, four years, five years for them, three, four, five years before they start getting really big. I, you know, it, it was, we we helped stock Apache. I, I You know, we, we put those, uh, you know, it seemed like, when we put those fingerlings in Apaches, just a couple of years later, they were they were two and a half solid, two and a half pound fish. Yeah, they fish, grew so fast, didn't they? They do, oh yeah, my gosh. real fast. These uh, lakes here are so fertile because of the shad and crawdads and stuff like that in these lakes. But good population of shad, that's for you sure. Know, Roosevelt should be the same way, Matt, because mm -hmm. we got the Salt River flowing in. There he is. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. Okay, uh, he's around a little bit. He's shaking weird, yeah. Oh, look at that. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't tell if he's a little tiny one or he almost feels like uh, a yellow bass. You know, that's best. what we're doing, folks, is once we oh, hook there one. There he is. Once we're hooked one, and he's not real big. Not real big, but it's a fish. Send back down there and get him. Not... <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Missed it. Golly. This one's pulling. This one's pulling like a better fish. Is he? But you never know. God, come on. <laughs> oh, he's not a better fish. He's another decent fish, but... Three? No, I don't think so. Well, maybe. He's a good fish. Oh, that's a good big mouth. Barely on the lip there. They're down there, though. Quality fish. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, they're so healthy down there. You can see the... You can always tell by their teeth too. That's one one thing. Really? Yeah, I was at a at a tournament. The teeth are going to be real sharp, razor sharp. And uh, I was at a tournament, and I didn't want to tell the guys I caught them on spoons. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the guy said, "Oh, you caught them all on spoons. I can tell." I was like, "No, we, caught, we threw some drop shot and other stuff." And he goes, "No, we can tell because the teeth are razor sharp. The shad eaters are razor sharp teeth. Those fish that are out digging in the rocks and eating crawdads, the teeth are not going to be sharp like that." That's oh why I say God. after you're, if you get on a good spoon bite, your your thumbs will be all shredded up at the end of the day because they have the laser sharp, oh, really? laser sharp teeth How from the shad. That? That's something good to learn. Yeah. That's a good tip. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like, oh, you spooned them all. I'm like, how'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> he knew who, who you were. That was Daniel Elias that actually oh, did that. Oh, was yeah. it? <laughs> Mark he was weighing in the fish and he just looked at him and. You can get a pretty good idea of what you caught them on. There's more down there. Boy, they fired up. You went right through them. I know it. I didn't even get a bite out of it. It's like <laughs> unbelievable. How many? We're only getting one fish out of each school. Like which this, which know? is weird. I, we should be getting these double hookups. I don't know. No, no why. Who's to your right, Matt? And let's just make yep. sure. Well, definitely exciting, guys. You know, uh, being out here. Rained a little bit on us, but the weather's good. It's warm, isn't it, man? Beautiful, it's nice beautiful here. day. It's just fun learning about the graft fishing and spooning and stuff like that. It's a far cry from, you know, what I normally do, throwing jigs and brush hogs and drop shot and stuff <laughs> like that. We catch a lot of fish that way, but this is just something different that you can do, you know, that you can come up here, especially for you guys over here in East Mesa, coming out here and, you know, uh, it's only not that much of a drive to come out here. I know so many, how many people we, we talk to at our seminars that come up here and they just don't catch any fish at all. I mean, they don't venture out and do something off the wall like this, you know. They'll just drop shot the shoreline or, you know, throw crankbaits and stuff like that. But it definitely is worth it. And I'll tell you, typically, typically Canyon, you know, even growing up before the fish scale we had, you know, I think, what was it, 2006 when we had the fish scale? Right. Growing up fishing Canyon, it was a it was still a challenging lake back then. I mean, I liked going to Saguaro better because it was just easier to catch fish at Saguaro Lake. But uh, you know, with all the deep canyons and the the walls we have on Canyon, you got to really be good at 
you know, <laughs> fishing that steep stuff and letting the bait fall if you're on the banks and that kind of thing. Just doesn't have as many flats and right. easy stuff like it, like Saguaro does. So could, we to, <laughs> so could we go to Saguaro Lake and, and do the same thing? Basically? Oh yeah, yeah. Hunt these fish down? And, Absolutely. And, and they're... do the same thing with the, the same spoons and stuff? Mm-hmm. And that's, oh, that's exactly it. And, yeah. you know, I know that, um, I talked to, you know, Scooter recently and he said right. they're catching them 65, 60, 65 foot even, even really? deeper. Really? Oh my gosh. So don't, yeah. So they can be anywhere. I mean, I've, I've got on great spoon bites and, you know, basically I, I concentrate on that 25 to 60 foot. That seems awesome. to be the, the depth where, you know, the fish just live, you know, in the, in the winter time this time of year in Arizona and all those fish we're catching, you know, they're full of air. They, they're living deep. Right. Doesn't mean they won't come up to the surface or, you know, you can catch a fish out of 10 foot of water. And that's the one thing that I never really could understand is at Roosevelt, you know, we'd, I'd catch a fish in 10 foot of water, get them in the live well, and it floats belly up like a cork. And yeah. I, I could never figure that out. And I just, I never really thought about it. It's like, well, these fish live in that 40 to 60 foot of water. They'll move up and feed and then go back out to where they're com comfortable. And that's, that's where these fish are living. I mean, they're... And, and just like you say, if they're shad in 20 foot of water and they're living in 50, it doesn't take them, what, two seconds to oh, yeah. swim that distance. Yeah, you know, they're, just... they're like rockets. <laughs> so that's why these things are going down so easy when yeah. you're releasing them. Because normally, like you said, we have to needle these fish. If we hold them up and, oh, yeah, this is a nice fish, you know, and stuff like that, and take pictures of them, normally they... they bloat and then when you put them in the water they float so yeah you gotta get that needle out and and that's the one one thing if you're going to put it in your you know put the fish in your live well and and let it sit in your live well you definitely want to learn how to needle the fish and 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 do it right and you know reel the fish up slow when you're catching them out of this deep of water because you know there was there's some fish down there huh there's some fish in there. <laughs> You know, there's, there was some times, you know, I know people were catching them deep and people would find six, seven pounders floating dead, you know, that couldn't swim back down. Right. So that's where that needle, you know, learning how to do that and getting confidence in that is really good, especially if you're tournament fishing. Right. If you're tournament fishing, you know how important that is. Oh, yeah. Well. They're around. We're finding certain areas that are holding some fish on the graph and that, and then we'll have to travel a little bit and there won't be nothing. And then we come back and we find a few more and... But we're definitely having to move around and find the shad. We find the shad, we find the fish. So if you're moving in a lake and like Matt, we were just talking about Saguaro, it'll be the same way, you know. Just keep looking around. Bartlett, it's the same way. I can go fishing and there's no fish on the graph or, or there's no shad, you know, it might be in the middle of the lake and I just keep moving around, going from point to point or some of my areas I like to fish and eventually I find them. Yeah. You yeah. know, there they are. And then, you know, I'm not spooning them, but I'm throwing Carolina rigs or chicken craws or brush hogs or something, and we're catching fish that way. That's one thing that I've gotten a lot better at is, is really covering water and really, you know, looking for fish. And, and one thing that I've noticed is, you know, if you, if you do have an area where you're, you know, running, running down the bank and you find, you know, you catch a fish, keep, keep an eye on that fish and look for followers. A lot of times that's a really good clue of how many fish are really in that area. And I, I found that out at Roosevelt, one of the FLW tournaments. Uh -huh. In practice, I had an area where I, you know, had a two pounder and there was three or four others chasing it. And uh, I didn't even fish it the first day. The second day I went back to that spot and had the biggest weight of the tournament. And that oh, wow. just shows you when you see wolf packs of fish and you see the numbers of fish, you know, pay attention to that. You know, there's, there's, you know, there's clues everywhere. You know, you just gotta, just gotta keep pay thinking attention. about it. Yeah, oh, there he is! Oh, <laughs> like oh, I said, yeah. oh, thinking did he come on? Paying attention, huh? No, oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, here they come. Oh, there they come. Here they come. I would they drop go. it straight down in there. I'm down in it right oh, now. Lee. Look at this. Look at that. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh! Look, Look at, at those that. fish. Re reel up to it. Rip it. Let it reel up a little bit. Then let it flutter down all the way. Those fish should eat that spoon. I'm telling you. They're following it down, it looks like. Let it go all the way to the bottom. You, we, <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> that should be double hookup city. And that's it what's should. so fun about catching them on spoons. You know, we, I took a couple people out, so there's a total of three of us fishing. You know, you go half an hour, 45 minutes, or sometimes more without catching a fish. But then once you get around them like that and your graph looks like that, then there you go. Oh, boy. Look at that. They're decent fish. Yeah, they're nice, nice fish. Caught them on the trebles, but 
Did yeah, you? you can see that. You see how just bloated they are, and I I tried not to to reel them up so fast, but yeah, we've you know, been reeling them up slow. But I could I could needle one real quick. Yeah, just to, you got a needle with you? Let's, if let's... you release them right away, it's uh it usually is you know they'll swim back down, but basically. Basically, just make sure the, the needle's clear. And one thing you can do is you can put a little water right. in the needle. So get a little water in there so you can kind of see. <clears throat> and basically, what you want to do is those crushers right there. Those are the crushers. Go right in between them and just go real nice and slow, okay? So basically, what I'm going to do is needle them. And the water helps you know that you hit the air and you just want to let it equalize and then once you release them just like this you have no right problem down. swimming down so uh be real gentle and when you go between those crushers like i say if you put a little water in there or you do it underwater you can see the bubbles and it, it gives you you know to make sure you're doing it right don't be aggressive don't jab it in there um just be real slow real slow as soon as you get that air just hold it let it equalize and then throw it back so that's a uh, that's what you want to do if you're going to keep them in a live well for the tournament fishermen, that kind of thing. And I'm just using the, the Benz Mender needle. Gives you a good, good needle to, uh, uh, you know, hold on to and that kind of thing. And it, and it also has that, that rod in there that will clear the needle out. So that's it for catching deep fish. Yeah, good tip. You know, while well, we're going to wrap this up today at Canyon Lake, um, I think we've caught about nine fish and uh, we're just fishing the flat out here right now, just trying to catch one more, but it's getting pretty late, Matt, you know, and the front's coming in more and more. It's getting colder and colder. I put, we both put our sweatshirts on, you know, it's getting pretty cold, and every once in a while it starts drizzling, but I um, just want to thank you, Matt, for hey, coming, thanks coming for out and fishing me. with us today. Yeah, Appreciate it was good. It. it was fun. We didn't get the giants, but right. got a couple nice ones. Yeah, someday we'll, uh, we'll come back in the spring when it's good, you know, yeah. or, or something. Or when it's sunny out. Yeah. Yeah, when, when the Florida bass are biting, because like I said, they're very, very picky about uh, eating and stuff, you know, whether it's Saguaro Canyon or Apache. Yeah, the lakes so, can just shut off in a yep. in a in a day, you know, just like that. And it did. But it, it was nice coming out here on a Friday and, you know, taking the day off and coming out and we did catch some nice three pounders, two and a half, three pounders, so that was good. So yeah. so I think we had a good day, got the people show the people the video and see what's going on at Canyon Lake and spooning and stuff like that. So with that, we just want to thank you for watching.